So in 2018, scientists condensed the entire genome of the yeast species Saccharomyces cerevisiae into one giant chromosome. This species normally has 16 chromosomes, so scientists did this by taking all 16 chromosomes and concatenating them end to end, creating one giant chromosome. And so what was the result? It survived. And not only did it survive, but it was able to reproduce. And not just reproduce, but able to make viable offspring. Now granted, it had reduced growth, reduced competition, and some trouble maintaining the correct number of chromosomes during division, but still, wow. Also, they looked at the transcriptional changes in the yeast. So basically the changes in gene expression. And basically they found that really nothing different was going on between the two. So what's the point of having 16 chromosomes when you could just have one chromosome? Okay, but before we get to that, let's look at some organisms that have extreme number of chromosomes. So here we've got this male ant with only one chromosome, and on the other extreme, we have this butterfly with 224 chromosomes, which is the record number of chromosomes for a eukaryotic species that is not polyploid. It's a diploid. So let's go back and clear something up. What is polyploid? Polyploid is when an organism has more than two sets of copies of their chromosomes. Like for example, sugarcane, which has eight copies of their chromosomes, which would be octoploid. And we're diploid, so we have two copies of our chromosomes in each cell. So anyways, back to the ant and butterfly. Is the butterfly more complex than the ant? Well, no. It's already well known that genome size is not correlated with complexity. So now let's consider both genome size and genome organization. So size being like how many megabytes of files or information you have and organization being how many hard drives is it gonna to take to store all of those. So now considering both genome size and organization, let's look at some examples. Humans have roughly 3.2 billion base pairs spread out over 23 chromosomes, whereas this fish has 132 billion base pairs spread out over 14 chromosomes. Basically, this fish has 40 times more DNA spread out over half the number of chromosomes that we do. So what's the role of chromosome number? Why have one chromosome versus 16 versus 100 chromosomes? So looking at the mitotic spindle of another yeast species might shed some light on this question. So just to clarify, the mitotic spindle is the fibers that will pull the chromosomes apart during cell division. So this other yeast species, Pombe, has a similar number of genes to Saccharomyces, but only has three chromosomes. Remember, Saccharomyces had 16. So what is that about? Research has shown that Pombe has a um, larger and more connection points for the mitotic spindle to latch onto and pull the chromosomes apart. Another interesting explanation could be that creating an additional copy of a chromosome can be a quick fix to being in a stressful or rapidly changing environment. So if you have a small chromosome to create an extra copy of, that's gonna be cost much less like energy-wise, than copying one giant chromosome. On a completely different note, why is chromosome called chromosome? The word was first used in 1888, and it comes from the two Greek words, chroma, meaning color, and soma, meaning body. So basically, color, body. Okay, but more so it means stainable body. And this comes from the fact that histologists have to add dyes to be able to see tissues or cells under the microscope because most of us is actually clear. So all those bright colors that you see in microscope pictures or under the microscope come from different dyes that have been added. However, there are a few parts of our body that are naturally pigmented. One such example is the substantia nigra in the brain. 
The substantia nigra is a group of dopaminergic neurons located in the midbrain. You probably heard of it because it's implicated in Parkinson's disease. This group of neurons has a black color because it has accumulated neuromelanins, which get formed from the metabolism of dopamine. So that's it for this video. Um, make sure to check the links in the description and hopefully see you next time.